good morning folks. Cumberland Outdoorsman here with you. This is uh, November the 3rd and it's a, kind of a cool frosty morning and uh, this morning I thought I'm gonna challenge myself a little bit doing a little squirrel hunting with a BB gun. Well it's not really a BB gun it's an air rifle okay. This is a new gun that I bought this past summer. Uh, this is the Diana Storm Rider in 22 pre charge pneumatic. And it has a bolt on the side here that has been, been improved from the first generation. This is, by the way, the second generation of this uh, particular model. And uh, it carries a rotary magazine. And this one holds uh, seven shots, the 22. I think the 177 caliber holds like nine shots, I believe. And I've uh, shot it at targets and it, it's rather accurate. And the gun actually seems to favor the uh, Crossman Premier hollow point pellet quite well. Uh, at 20 yards, I've shot one whole group with it. So it should do well on small games such as uh, squirrels and rabbits, things of that nature, you know. And it came with this uh, muzzle brake or silencer actually, it's actually a, a, an air silencer so to speak. And uh, it does cut down on the noise some when you're hunting. And Not that air guns are really loud but they can produce a little bit of a pop. Now this one here, as I said, is a pre-charged pneumatic. The air is actually stored here in this cylinder and there's a gauge at the bottom that tells you how much pressure that the cylinder has in it and you want to stay in the green there if you can see that and you'll need a pump to be able to pump this back up or loaded cylinder full of air you know like a scuba tank or something like that to be able to recharge the gun now each charge I get about 30 to 40 anyway, shots. We're going to take this in the woods this morning and uh, see how well it can perform on squirrels. I've never actually hunted with this gun. I've just shot it, you know, on the range and in sighting it in. But uh, anyway, I've, oh, I forgot to mention this has a 4x32 mil dot wide angle scope and it's a UTG scope. And it, it's held on by the mounts that uh, came supplied with the scope. So anyway, without further ado, let's take it in the woods and see how well it does.
Well, folks, that last squirrel, I had to shoot it twice. I really kind of hated to, but uh, had to finish it off there. It was kind of a long shot, probably around 55 yards or so, which I really don't like to take shots beyond 45 yards with an air gun like this because uh, the energy does drop off some. But uh, I had a clear open shot, so I went ahead and took it. Now, the other squirrels that I shot at, uh, they were just clean misses, and the reason being, it's a good lesson to learn, even for an older guy like me, make sure you check your gun <laughs> before you go hunt, because the gun was actually shooting uh, low and to the left, so I had to correct the sights on it, got it back on target. But anyway, I was just sitting here and waiting to see what happened. It's getting kind of late right now. Uh, I'm going to continue this video later on, but... Uh, you know, sometimes you're sitting out here in the woods and everything's nice and quiet and it's just a, one of those beautiful, peaceful moments that you have, especially this time of year. I mean, it, it's really a pretty time of year because the leaves are really starting to change color now. There's still a lot of green leaves, but they're, they're just making that transition into gold and orange and uh, reddish colors. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn this camera around and show you. I mean, if you just look at that, the coloration there, you just have to take in a moment sometimes, you know, when you're sitting out here. It doesn't matter if you're hunting or fishing or hiking or whatever. Sometimes you just have those peaceful moments when everything just kind of calms down and it's quiet and it's moments like these that I thank our good Lord for providing the beauty of mother nature depending on how things go I may come back out here and, and do another segment of this video try to get a few more maybe this evening if I don't go fishing but we'll see how that goes. So see you folks later. Well, folks, as it turns out, I couldn't go fishing. I had a little project I had to finish at home. And uh, then I went to go check my boat and the battery was down in my boat. So I really wanted to go crappie fishing. But uh, anyway, this will give me a chance to uh, continue hunting with this uh, air rifle this afternoon. I hear lots of squirrel activity around me here, so we're going we're to let the afternoon settle down, see what might come in here, show you what I'm overlooking here. Somebody's dog barking over there, I don't know why, going crazy, <clears throat> but anyway, that's not going to bother us, not going to bother the squirrel hunting either. They should be on the move, and uh, things should start picking up pretty quickly here. I dropped that one pretty clean. There's another one right at the base of that tree. Okay, there's one. He's wondering what's happened. I think he's down there. He's right at the edge of that.
I missed the first shot. Hit the second one. I think he's dead right there. Go down there and check it out. Okay, I was sitting up there on that hill there. Made that shot down through here. This was the tree the squirrels were in. One's laying there. That's the one that dropped instantly. Looks like a perfect headshot. And then the other one was right here at the side of this tree. I hit him, he fell down, and I saw him run over this way. But then I didn't see any more movement. And there he lay. Sure he's dead. Yeah. Pretty good sized squirrel there. Shot that one through the lungs. He didn't go far. He went from that tree to there. One shot. Okay, just to show you folks, I wasn't kidding about the distance. That far tree on the other side of that ravine right there. That's where I shot those squirrels. That big tall one there. I'm walking up through here. Up there is where the camera stand is. Next to that black tree there. That's a pretty good little stretch for an air rifle. Okay, what I probably should have done was just stayed here and left those two squirrels down there, but I was unsure about that last one that I shot. I didn't want him to get away and maybe crawl off in a hole where I couldn't find him later on because it is getting darker right now. Uh, that, Like I showed you there, that squirrel only ran a few feet and died right there. If I had known that, I'd have stayed right here. But uh, I've kind of disturbed the woods a little bit. I've heard some squirrels barking back there and I heard a turkey. And then there were two deer that ran off when I went over there. But uh, that shows you, you know, the, these air rifles, they're quiet but they're very effective. They're accurate and powerful. I mean, they don't have the same power as a 22 uh, rimfire. I mean, it's, it's not a firearm, it's an air gun, but uh, they are quite effective on small game. But it, it, they really lend themselves well to this type of stealth hunting where you've got small targets at distance and you're just picking them off and, and leaving them you know, instead of coming through here with a 20 or a 12 gauge and, and blasting the woods, I don't like to hunt that way. Um, I'd rather hunt with a rifle, 22 or, or an air rifle. And if I do use a 22, especially in the early season, I use a 22 short, like I showed you in my other videos. And then later on, I'll go to a long rifle, but I'll usually stay with a uh, standard velocity or subsonic because squirrel hunting in the late season can be kind of tough because they get real skittish once the leaves are gone. I and just you heard have to... something up here. I don't know what it was. It could be a squirrel. It might be a deer. I don't know. There's something moving right there. There it is right there. That's another squirrel. in the field still. Right there. Got that one. There's a raccoon right there going up that tree. I hope he doesn't have my squirrel. There he is right there. Doesn't look like there's anything in his mouth. looking right at us. 
I better get over there and get my squirrel before he does. Because it's right at the base of that tree. Well, anyway, he's still up there staring at me. I guess he's waiting for me to go over there and get that squirrel. <laughs> like, hey man, what are you waiting on? <laughs> anyway, let's. I'm gonna go ahead and gather that squirrel up. He's moving on up now. It's a pretty good size raccoon. Get these two here and. And that one there, that'll be enough for the afternoon. And uh, get them back home while there's still some light. There's another squirrel right up here in this tree. And then there's two behind me and some more over there. Lots of game in these woods. So uh, anyway, three's enough. That'll make a good meal. So uh, let me close off with that and uh, get these things home and get them cleaned. That's the tree that the raccoon is in. He's up there between those two limbs there. And then uh, here's the squirrel I just got. Sorry about the fading light, but here it is at the end of the day. Uh, I started this video earlier this morning, hunted for a while, and then got back in the woods this afternoon and harvested these three squirrels using the Diana Storm Rider in 22 caliber. Um, my final review on hunting with this particular air rifle is yes, it is effective if you make a good shot. Marginal shots, sometimes, you know, uh, like the first squirrel that I harvested, I had to shoot it twice. And then the last one I thought was a clean headshot kill. That squirrel was actually still moving. So remember that. Always make sure whether you shoot a deer, a rabbit, Squirrel, whatever, make sure they're dead before you pick them up, especially squirrels, because they will bite you. Uh, I always either use the my muzzle of my gun or my just uh, move them with my foot just to make sure, because, you know, it is wildlife, as I mentioned. But uh, I still prefer to use my 22 rimfire for uh, squirrel hunting. Um, it's just much more effective especially at longer distances. And if you make a squirrel, uh, a headshot on a squirrel with a rimfire, especially a hollow point, when you go pick up that squirrel, it's dead. I mean, it, it's dead before it hits the ground. But uh, they, these rifles do have their, have their place in the woods. If you're disciplined enough to know a shot that, that you have is gonna be an effective shot, you know. Um, now the squirrels that I shot at earlier this morning, they were all clean misses, the first few that I shot at. And that's because the scope was not set properly for this rifle. So after resighting it, I was able to harvest these squirrels. So anyway, um, that's uh, squirrel hunting here in Tennessee, late October, early November. You know, that's, things are starting to change. It's time to get ready for deer season now. And also I'll be getting out and doing some crappie fishing. And uh, I'm gonna also do a video showing how to clean these squirrels. There are a few different methods on how to clean them. And also probably uh, gonna do a, a cooking session on, on squirrels, on wild game like this, because a lot of people wanna know different recipes and I'll show you some of the recipes that I have. So anyway, remember, if you can get out and go hunting or fishing, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And. Uh, that like button. Please subscribe. Uh, I'll have more videos coming your way. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And so I'll see you next time. This is the Cumberland Outdoorsman. Y'all have a great day. And take care, my friend. Thanks for watching.